Hello students, I hope that you guys are doing well. Um, this book I got from the Internet Archive Library because I couldn't go back to school and pick it up. So it is um, a great tool, this library, if you want to check out books. It's like Mac and Via, but it seems to have a lot more. So I'm going to read the book to you, and I hope you enjoy it. We were on, I think, page 107, but maybe we weren't. So we'll check it out, and we'll see. All right, let's get to reading. Saturday, March 17th. Today is Saturday. So this morning I walked to the butterfly trees again. The grove was quiet and peaceful, and because the sun was shining, I stood there a long time, looking at the orange butterflies floating through the gray and green leaves and listening to the sound of the ocean on the rocks. There aren't as many butterflies now. Maybe they are starting to go north for the summer. I thought I might write about them in prose instead of poetry, but on the way home, I got to thinking about Dad and one time when he took me along when he was hauling grapes to a winery and what a great day it had been. Yesterday, Miss Neely, the librarian, excuse me, asked if I had written anything for young writers yearbook because all the writing had to be turned in by tomorrow. When I told her I hadn't, she said I had 24 hours and why didn't I get busy? So I did because it really would, I would really like to meet a famous author. My story about the 10 foot wax man went into the wastebasket. Next, I tried to story, a start a story called The Great Lunchbox Mystery, but I couldn't seem to turn my lunchbox experience into a story because I don't know who the thief, thieves was, were, and I don't want to know. Finally, I dashed off a description of the time I rode with my father when he was trucking the load of grapes down Highway 152 through Pacheco Pass to a winery. I put in things like the signs that said steep grade, truck use low gear, and how dad Dan shifted, and how skillful he was handling a long, heavy load on the curves. I put in about the hawks on the telephone wires and about the high peak where Black Bart's lookout used to watch for travelers coming through the pass so he could signal to Black Bart to rob them, and how the leaves of the trees along the stream at the bottom of the pass were turning yellow and how good tons of grapes smelled in the sun. I left out the parts about the waitresses and the video games. Then I copied the whole thing over in case neatness counts and gave it to Miss Neely. Saturday, March 24th. Mom said I had to invite Barry over to our house for supper because I was, I have been going to his house after school so often. We had been working on a burglar alarm for his room, which we finally got to work with some help from a library book. I wasn't sure Bar Barry would like to come to our house, which is so small compared to his, but he accepted when I invited him. Mom cooked a casserole full of good things like ground beef, chilies, tortillas, tomatoes, and cheese. Barry said he really liked eating at our house because he got tired of eating with a bunch of little sisters waving spoons and drumsticks. That made me happy. It helps to have a friend. Barry says his burglar alarm still works. The trouble is, his little sisters think it's funny to open his door to set it off. They, then they giggle and hide. This was driving his mother crazy, so he finally had to disconnect it. We all laughed about this. Barry and I felt good about making something that worked, even if it can't be used. Barry saw the sign on my door that said, keep out mom, that means you. Yes, if my mom really stays out of my room. I said, sure, if I keep things picked up, mom is not a snoop. Barry said he wished he could have a room nobody ever went into. I was glad Barry didn't ask to use the bathroom. Maybe I'll start scrubbing off that mildew after all. Sunday, March 25th. I keep thinking about dad and how lonely he sounded and wondering what happened to the pizza boy. I don't like to think about dad being lonesome, but I don't like to think about the pizza boy cheering him up either. Tonight at supper, Beans and Franks, I got up my courage to ask mom if she thought dad would get married again. She thought a while and then said, 
I don't see how he could afford to. He has big payments to make on the truck, and the price of diesel oil goes up all the time. And when people can't afford to build houses or buy cars, he won't be hauling lumber or cars. I thought this over. I know that a license for a truck like his costs over $1,000 a year, but he always sends my support payments, I said, even if he is late sometimes. Yes, he does that, agreed my mother. Your father isn't a bad man by any means. Suddenly I was mad and disgusted with the whole thing. Then why don't you two get married again? I guess I wasn't very nice about the way I said it. Mom looked me straight in the eye. Because your father will never grow up, she said. I knew that all, was all she was ever going to say about it, too. Tomorrow they give out the Young Writer's Yearbook. Maybe I'll be lucky and get to go have lunch with the famous author. Monday, March 26. Today was not the greatest day of my life. When our class went to the library, I saw a stack of yearbooks and could hardly wait for Miss Neely to hand them out. When I finally got mine and opened it for the first to the first page, there was a monster story, and I saw I hadn't won first prize. I kept turning. I didn't want, excuse me. I didn't win second prize, which went to a poem, and I didn't win third or fourth prize either. Then I turned another page and saw honorable mention and under it, A Day on Dad's Rig by Lee Botts. That was my title with my name under it in print. Even if it was mimeographed, I can't say I wasn't disappointed because I hadn't won a surprise. I was. I was really disappointed about not getting to meet the mysterious author excuse me, the mysterious famous author, but I like seeing my name in print. Some kids were mad because they didn't win or even get something printed. They said they wouldn't ever try to write again, which I thought was pretty dumb. I have heard the re I have heard that real authors sometimes have their books turned down. I figured you win some, you lose some. Then Miss Neely announced that the famous author, the winners would get to go have lunch with Angela Badger. The girls are more excited than the boys because Angela Badger writes mostly about girls with problems like big feet or pimples or something. I would still like to meet her because she is, as they say, a real live author, and I've never met a real live author. I am glad Mr. Henshaw isn't the author because then I would be really disappointed that I didn't get to meet him. Friday, March 30th. Today turned out to be exciting. In the middle of second period, Miss Neely called me out of class and asked if I would like to have lunch with Angela Badger. I said, sure, how come? Miss Neely explained that the teachers discovered that the winning poem had been copied out of a book and wasn't original, so the girl who submitted it would not be allowed to go and would I like to go in her place? Oh, would I? Miss Neely did telephone my mom at work for permission and gave my lunch and I gave my lunch to Barry because my lunches are better than his. The other winners were all dressed up, but I didn't care. I have noticed that authors like Mr. Henshaw usually wear old plaid shirts in the pictures on the back of their books. My shirt is just as old as his, so I knew it was okay. Miss Neely drove us in her own car to the Holiday Inn, where some of the librarians and their winners were waiting in the lobby. Then Angela Badger arrived with Mr. Badger, and we all led were all led into the dining room, which was pretty crowded. One of the librarians, who was a sort of super librarian, told the winners to sit at a long table with a sign that said reserved. Angela Badger sat in the middle, and some of the girls pushed to sit beside her. I sat across from her. Super librarian explained that we could choose our lunch from the salad bar. Then all the librarians went off and sat at a table with Mr. Badger. There I was, face to face, with a real live author who seemed like a nice lady, plump with wild hair, and I couldn't think of anything to say because I hadn't read her books. Some girls told her how much they loved her books, but some of the boys and girls were too shy to say anything. Nothing seemed to happen until Miss Badger said, Why don't we all go help ourselves to lunch at the salad bar? What a mess. 
some people didn't understand about salad bars. But Miss Badger led the way, and we helped ourselves to lettuce and bean salad and potato salad and all the usual stuff they lay out on salad bars. A few of the younger kids were too short to reach anything, but the bowls on the first rows. They weren't doing too well until Mrs. Badger helped them out. Getting lunch took a long time, longer than in a school cafeteria, and when we carried our plates back to our table, people at the other tables ducked and dodged as if they expected us to dump our lunches on their heads. All one boy had on his plate was a piece of lettuce and a slice of tomato because he thought he was going to go back for the roast beef and fried chicken. We had to straighten him out and explain that all we got was salad. He turned red and went back for more salad. I was still trying to think of something Thing interesting to say to Mrs. Badger while I chased garbanzo beans around my plate with a fork. A couple of girls did all the talking, telling Miss Badger how they wanted to write books exactly like hers. The other librarians were busy talking and laughing with Mr. Badger, who seemed to be a lot of fun. Mrs. Badger tried to get some of the shy people to say something without much luck, and I still couldn't think of anything to say. A lady who wrote to his lady who wrote books about girls with big feet or pimples. Finally, Mrs. Badger looked straight at me and asked, what did you write for the yearbook? I felt myself turn red and answered, just something about a ride on a truck. Oh, said Miss Badger. So you're the author of A Day on Dad's Rig. Everyone was quiet. None of us had known the real life author would have read what we had written. But she had, and she remembered my title. I just got an honorable mention, I said, but I was thinking, she called me a real author. A real live author called me an author. What difference does that make? Asked Miss Badger. Judges never agree. I happen to like a day on dad's rig because it was written by a boy who wrote honestly about something he knew and had strong feelings about. You made me feel that it was like what it was like to ride down a sea prairie with tons of grapes behind me. But I couldn't make it into a story, I said, feeling a whole lot braver. Braver. Who cares, said Mrs. Badger with a wave of her hand. She's the kind of person who wears the rings on her forefingers. What do you expect? The ability to write stories comes later, when you have lived longer and have more understanding. A day on Dad's rig was splendid work for a boy your age. You wrote like you, and you did not try to imitate someone else. This is one mark of a good writer. Keep it up. So basically she's telling him that he wrote in his own voice. He didn't copy like someone else's voice, like hers or like Mr. Henshaw's. So having them your own voice is very important. It takes time to develop, but it's important. I noticed a couple of girls who had been saying they wanted to write books exactly like Angela Badger exchange embarrassed looks. Hmm, I wonder why. Gee, thanks was all I could say. The waitress began to pluck down dishes of ice cream. Everyone got over being shy and began to ask Mrs. Badger if she wrote in pencil or on a typewriter, and did she ever have books rejected, and were her characters real people, and did she have ever have pimples when she was a girl, like the girl in her book, and what did it feel like to be a famous author? I didn't think answers to those questions were very important, but I did have one question I wanted to ask, which I finally managed to get in at the last minute when Mrs. Badger was autographing some books people had brought. Mrs. Badger, I said, did you ever meet Boyd Henshaw? Why, yes, she said, scribbling away in someone's books. I once met him at a meeting of librarians where we were on the same program. What's he like? I asked over the head of a girl crowding up with her book. He's a very nice young man with a wicked twinkle in his eye, she answered. I think I have known that since the time he answered my questions when Miss Martinez made us write to an author. On the ride home, everybody was chattering about Mrs. Badger this and Mrs. Badger that. I didn't want to talk. I just wanted to think. A real live author had called me an author. A real live author had told me to keep it up. Mom was proud of me when I told her. The gas station stopped pinging a long time ago, but I wanted to write all this down while I remembered. I'm glad tomorrow is Saturday. If I had to go to school, I would yawn. I wish dad was here so I could tell him all about today. Wow.
All right, guys. Well, go on and read the next pages. It's pages 123 to the end. Or maybe it's 122 to the end. Regardless, go to the next part. All right. Talk to y'all later.